Hey guys, Nate Madsen here. I have another vlog for you. I'm watching my kids during their quick lunch, so there's going to be some noise distractions in the background. But I want to talk about inspiration. Um, I often equate, especially if you're freelancing at home by yourself, and so, so many of us are working from home right now, that it can feel like a marathon. You're by yourself, you already have imposter syndrome about certain things, no matter where you are. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, I was talking about inspiration and the fact that working from home, working as a composer, sound designer, which is often one person in a room, can be isolating. And it can be hard to have inspiration, especially when you're dealing with imposter syndrome, which I don't care where you are in your career, whether you're at the higher echelon or whether you're starting out, or somewhere in the middle, you're going to have imposter syndrome about something. It seems to be inherent in all of us creative types. So, I'm going to show you two in, in my opinion, unusual sources of inspiration that have worked for me. Coming up next on Mad Some Musings. Hang tight. Okay, so two unique spots or resources for inspiration that I have found in my own life. First one is going to be a book about barbecue. What? A book about barbecue? So for those that don't know me, I love barbecue. I love everything about it. I love the process of making it. I definitely love eating it. Um, I love smelling it, seeing it. It's just a, a work of art to me. And I've been reading this book by Aaron Franklin. <clears throat> and I have a couple spots I'm just going to read to you real fast. He has a whole chapter, a whole sec section that's all about the beginning. But first I may have been disappointed that I was improving by leaps and bounds every time I managed to cook a brisket. Now I know that progress does not always flow in a steady stream. You have to give yourself some slack because learning how to make barbecue takes time and not everything is going to be a big success. There's about two more, three more. You add value to the ingredients through cooking and then do it all over again. That's how this entire thing has happened and is in fact still happening. This restaurant has not accrued one cent of debt. That's because you can build something out of nothing if you're just willing to work at it. And skip over a couple of pages here. All right. On Fridays, I'd spend the money I'd saved up all week at half price books, just a few dollars on whatever cool cookbooks I could find, as well as books on architecture, anything barbecue, of course, roadside stuff, especially Route 66 Americana, 1950s design, and old diners. I was gathering information an inspiration like so many nuts packed into a squirrel's cheeks. We got one more thing. <clears throat> I shut the door and sat on my bed and counted the money and thought to myself, wow, maybe I can do this. And this was the first time it ever truly seemed real to me. And that story Aaron Franklin is talking about, um, he's done several of these neighborhood cooks, informal get togethers in the backyard, front yard. And uh, it was all at his own cost and his wife's cost. And he was struggling back then. He said they were renters. They didn't have their own home. They were um, hobbling together things. So it wasn't like he was living the high life. He didn't have a lot of resources to work with. And then one of his buddies said, hey, we gathered up some tips basically from everyone. Everyone threw him some money. Didn't tell him. And he had some money that basically covered the cost of that event where they were cooking, I think two or, no, I think he said five briskets that were cooked, had some size, and it was just a get together. And this was a passion, a side thing that Aaron Franklin was doing that grew into, of course, now he's one of the top ranked barbecue pit masters in America. Um, and I've had his food several times and it's stellar. So I'm reading that book and those things inspire me because I'm seeing someone's journey. I'm seeing some, someone when they don't have a lot of stuff at the beginning, a lot of resources, a lot of money, um, a lot of know-how, and so they're just gathering it up. I love that um, picture he paints of like a squirrel with its mouth full of food. You're just gathering up any morsel of either information or inspiration you can. And that's where some of y'all are in your careers. And believe it or not, that's where you're going to be again as you get further in your career. It's a marathon. And so there are times you have to rest and remind yourself, inspire yourself. So this barbecue book has inspired me about my own career. I love the fact that he talks about building up 
things as he went along. He didn't go out and get a loan for $100,000 and get proper gear to do the job right from the beginning. In fact, he even talked about he he browsed Craigslist for the free stuff and there's this like $99 smoker back in the day. He said very poorly made, thin metal, it leaks, it doesn't regulate temperature very well at all. And he would look at that every night after work and he found someone had purchased that smoker, used it once and said this is trash, it's on the curb, it's yours if you want to go pick it up. And he just raced over there in his truck hoping that he could get it and he was able to get it. So you gotta scrabble. You gotta be you know, tough and you gotta work at it and you have to really be crafty. I love that about Anne Franklin. It's not coming from a place of ego. It's saying, I really had to work at this, but I was passionate about this and I didn't know, I didn't believe, I doubt myself if I could make this happen. And then slowly, over time, as his skills increased and as his audience increased, he started to think, well, maybe I can do this. You need to look for ways that you can have sources of inspiration for you. Um, I'll give you one other point. My wife and I recently joined Masterclass. Um, we have the nine, or no, we have the unlimited one year thing. We have two passes with that. So she is pursuing writing. She's very passionate about writing and watching a whole bunch of trailers about that. Sorry, she's watching a whole bunch of classes about that. Um, and I'm passionate. I'm doing the Aaron Franklin Masterclass video as well as reading his book. And then I, I'm doing the Danny Elfman Masterclass. I've already done the Hans Zimmer one. Did that one a couple years back. I want to do, let's see, who else? Um, there's a couple of the music ones. But one thing I found when my wife and I were looking at Masterclass saying, do we want to do this? Do we want to pay the money to have a, a subscription? I watched a whole bunch of the trailers. And the trailers are very inspiring. They're well crafted. They're well cut. There's a great pace to them. The music swells and everything is really, really good. But the bigger draw from that, or the bigger thing to take away from that is you see all of these professionals who have achieved a high level of success, but so many of them are talking about either their own doubt, or they're talking about their own journey, or they're finding that there are all kinds of ways to navigate towards the goal. And that should be inspiring to y'all. Watch some of these videos, take a master class, even if it's not topic related to your core craft, you're going to see that these people work at it and they have different solutions to similar problems. And it might make you think about, wow, maybe I'm trying to go at this the way other people do, but maybe that's not the right way for me. Maybe I may need to go this other route. So Spitfire recently had a competition with Westworld and you could score a scene. And the winning submission drew some controversy because it went pretty far off brief from what was described there and people were discussing it. Now, I'm not going to get into that whole can of worms over there, but it's something to say, maybe going the same route that everyone else does is not going to give you the best results. It's a mixed bag. I do have to be honest with you about that because there are certain things I've done in my career where I've gone rogue, I've done something very different, and it has gotten me some notoriety, it has gotten me some success, and that's great. In my day job, I'm doing certain things where I, I don't want to go too far rogue. If I go too far rogue, then it might be off brand. So the brand managers might, re might refuse it. Or it may not speak well with our players. And so our players might reject it. And then at the end of the day, it's a less successful product. So I don't necessarily want that. So I think there's an importance, there's a balance there between knowing when you should go rogue and do something unique. I would say some of the stuff I'm doing with Skatebird is definitely unique and definitely different, for me at least, than what I've ever done before. Um, but some of the stuff I do is with side play, it needs to be within a rim, within a parameter, within a ballpark of style and genre. Otherwise, I might be too far off the mark. So, um, so look for inspiration. Look for ways to break the mold, but be disciplined about it and know how to fulfill your function and how to do your job well um, by those who expect it from you, by people you collaborate with, directors, audience, players brand managers, all that stuff. So I just want to share those two resources I found. I didn't start reading this Aaron Franklin book expecting to be inspired about my own business as an audio professional, but I have been. And going to Masterclass, I didn't expect to be inspired by those trailers talking about how to be a, become an author. This is why I love shows like Inside the Actor's Studio, where you hear about the, the journey and the struggle, the hard years, the lean years, 
where you cut your teeth on something and you get better and better and better and better at it. So look for the sources of inspiration. They may not be right in front of you. It may not be directly tied to your focus area, but it can definitely help. It can definitely inspire. Hope that's helpful. Hope you like this video. Hit like, subscribe, comment, leave me a message. I'd love to respond to you and take care. See you in the next one.